Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Mavericks Server and we're going to look at a service that's new to Mavericks uh, that hasn't been in previous server editions and that's the Xcode uh, service that's built into Mavericks Server. Now Xcode is uh, Apple's development uh, language that they use, a development application uh, that allows you to create Mac and iOS uh, applications. And so in server, they've built in a service that will streamline uh, your development uh, with those things uh, with a server. So if you've got multiple developers or people that are working on it, you can use the server uh, to streamline that process. And so I'm not a developer, so I can't go into all of the little details and nuances, but I can show you some of the basics of setting this up so that you get an idea of how it works and how it's intended to work. Now, uh, if you're not uh, an official developer with Apple, uh, you need to sign up for that. And so if you look, here's Apple's uh, development site. kind of talks about all the different things that they offer uh, developers. Uh, now, it is $99 a year uh, for uh, a development membership, and that's $99 uh, per uh, iOS or Mac. So in other words, if you're both a Mac and iOS developer, uh, it would be $99 twice for that uh, to be able to have access to both. So uh, you need to create a developer's license, again, if you want all of the pieces to work. And so uh, that's the first thing you do. Uh, one of the good, great things about it is if you are a developer, uh, they do give you a code uh, for server itself. So if you don't have server yet, they'll give you the code for that. And so you'd get server for free. Uh, so there's a $20 discount there, uh, roughly, because that's what server costs. But uh, you do want to make sure that you are signed up as a developer to take advantage of, uh, of all the different features in the service. So right out of the gate, uh, it tells you to choose Xcode. Uh, so what you're going to need to do is go to the App Store and download uh, the latest version of Xcode, um, whatever that uh, it looks like. It's 5.1.1. You want to download that and get that installed. You can see that I have it installed. I've already done that. So let's just put this down. And so as you get started, the first thing it does is ask you to choose Xcode. So we're going to click on Choose Xcode, go to our applications here, and find Xcode right here and say Choose. And so once we've done that, it's waiting for Xcode uh, setup to complete. So it's going to work with that to set up your uh, Xcode instance here. And uh, once that's done, uh, then it'll basically give us uh, some configuration options. So I'm going to let this run. And when it's done, we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. OK, well, it's already here. So here it is uh, all set up. So now it's, we've chosen Xcode. And so as you can see here, we've got uh, an area for settings and we've got an area for repositories. And so I'll talk about these two things uh, as best I can here. Uh, the first thing you've got here, you can see we're offline. We haven't started the service yet. You can see it uh, already shows our Xcode build so that we know what the builds are. Uh, at any time, you can change that just by clicking on Choose and then go find a different version of Xcode if you, uh, if you have one. And so uh, it does allow you to do that, but it's just letting you know what, uh, what Xcode version it's going to use uh, to perform those uh, builds. Now, you also have a permissions area that says logged in users can create bots or anyone can view bots. And so bots are basically uh, just uh, things that go th crawl through your code and uh, make sure that everything is working properly. Uh, this comes in handy when you have multiple developers that are adding things to their code. Uh, it'll uh, allow uh, them to see and allow you to see what parts of the code are causing the problems so that you know where to fix that. And so uh, the bots will kind of crawl through that. If we click Edit here, what it allows you to do is set the basic bot permissions. So you can say they can be created by any logged in users, by anyone or only some users, and you can specify who has the rights to do that. So if you're working on a developer team, uh, maybe you just want the admin person uh, to create uh, bots. And so you would say only some users and just select yourself. Uh, or you can just have any logged in users uh, set it up because you know that you've given them permission to log in already. You can make that work. So it's up to you how you want to do that, but it does allow you to control those permissions. Uh, also, you can allow view only access if you want to, so that people can see how it's working uh, when they set it up. And you can again set that up for uh, anyone or logged in users. Basically, depending on what you choose up here, it'll give you uh, options for these depending on how you've done that. So if you only said some users, then you'd have the option to also have logged in users or anyone. Uh, view those things. Okay, So it does give you some basic permissions on the bot side of things. I'm just going to cancel that and leave that alone. Now right here is where you would set up your developer teams and so this is where you would add um, your server basically to the development environment uh, that Apple's got. So if I just click add here 
what it's going to ask you to do is log in with your Apple ID and password that's a part of the developer program. So whatever username and password you have that is associated with the uh, developer program that you uh, purchased, that you uh, did the subscription on, you would put that information in here. So let me just type that in. Okay, once that's typed in, you click Sign In. Okay, so it's signing in. And it says, add this server to my development team, right? Because it's under my name. And I'd say, yeah, add the server. And so what it's going to do now is it's actually adding my server to the development team uh, so that, uh, you know, Apple knows that this is registered and ready to go. So I'll take a, take a few minutes here. And now you can see the developer team is all set up. You can see I've got my name right there. And so now my server is registered uh, and it's, it's able to be used. If I, if I come back here, I can click Edit. And I can add other ones as well. If I wanted to add you know, a different server or I had different teams that I wanted to uh, put in here, maybe I had multiple uh, developer accounts that I wanted to use, I could add those in here. Uh, I don't, so I'm just going to leave that alone and uh, click uh, Cancel there. Okay, so now that we've got all of this set up, uh, we can go ahead and start the service. I'll show you how to use the devices in a minute. So we're just going to turn the service on. Now, if it's the first time you're running the service, you may get a drop down that asks you if it's okay to run on the web or not. And so running it on the web just gives you another way to access it. And so depending on how you want to run it, uh, you probably want to say yes to that to give you more options. Or if you really don't want to have it, on, have it that ac accessible that way, you can say no if you want to. So here we are, we've got it set and running, got the green dot here and here, so we know that our Xcode service is available. Now, in order to add uh, devices on here and uh, to run the bots and all that, uh, that information is uh, you need to actually add uh, some devices for testing. So let me just show you how that works. Uh, it works inside Xcode itself. Uh, so here I've set up uh, you know, an, a generic Xcode uh, project here that I'll be working on. And so what you want to do uh, is go into the window up here and open the organizer. And in the organizer, you go to devices, and then you can see you have your different devices on here. So you want to connect your device to your Mac uh, to get it set up. This is actually my server. I don't have any other devices uh, to connect because, like I said, I don't develop. Uh, so I don't have those set up. Uh, but what you would do is you could either click in here to add it, or you can add it to the member center right here. And it says to add the Mac, you'll need an Apple ID account that's enrolled in the developer program. So you want to make sure that you have your Apple ID and information. And we can say add. And then it's going to say enter the, again, the Apple ID associated with the developer program. So let me just put that in. Okay, once I have that in there, then I just click add. And once I've done that, now it's actually added uh, my information in there. I've got my Apple ID in here as an account under the account pane. Got all of my uh, information uh, about uh, the Mac program. You can see here it says that I'm, I'm enrolled in the Mac uh, development program, but not iOS, so I can join that here if I want to. Uh, it's got other details and all of that. But that way now I've actually uh, joined my particular machine uh, to uh, Xcode, so I'm ready to go. And you can see, to add this Mac, select a development team to use for provisioning. So I'm going to use the development team that I, that I set up already. We're going to click on Choose. So now it's going to set it up. It says certificate wasn't found. So what do you want to do? So you want to request a certificate. So now it's going to fetch uh, a provisioning profile for me so that uh, my machine will be set up for development. And so I'll just take a little bit of time there to get that set up. But once that's set up, then uh, there we go. Now my Mac is all set uh, to be one of my developer machines. So let me just uh, close this down for a minute. And let me just uh, close this down. And so I come back in here. Now, the device should show up on here. Now, in this case, because it, it's actually the server that I'm running, I don't believe it shows up in this window. If you had an extra uh, device out there, that would show up, and then you could edit it and use it. Uh, but for now, this hasn't shown up. So let's take a look uh, down here. Uh, let's look at the view bots. If you just click on that, it brings up a screen here that shows uh, the various bots that you uh, will have set up. You can see I've got Xcode right here. I've got bots, which is what I'm looking at. And so if you set up the bots to run, if you had code that you had uh, already uploaded, the bots would run and tell you whether you failed or passed. Like I said, I'm not a developer. I don't have all this set up. I'm just kind of showing you how it works. You can come over to Xcode as well here, same kind of thing. So it'll give you stats and all of that, but those bots will run. And like I said, if you have multiple coders in there, it'll show you where it passed or where it failed and what needs to be fixed. And so it can run in the background. It can run overnight. You can kind of you know let those things run and know where your code's at. Let me just pop that down. So let's take a look now at the repositories area here. And this is where you can set up a uh, Git repository. 
uh, for your Xcode. Uh, you can see we've got hosted ones uh, over different uh, protocols. You can do them over this again, HTTP, HTTPS, so it's like a web protocol. Or you can do it also over SSH if you want to. So you can set those protocols up the way you want to. I'm going to leave those alone. And then they can be created by who, and you can select who can actually create these repositories. Again, lo anyone, logged in users, or only some. So I'm just going to leave it at logged in. And then you just create them by coming down here, clicking the plus button, and you can say uh, either host uh, a Git repository, connect to one that you've already got, or connect to a, a subversion repository. Just depends what you have set up. In this case, uh, I'm just going to host my own. I'm going to call it, uh, let's say, my, my new app. Okay, something like that. Uh, now I can add SSH access if I want to so that logged in re users can read and write. Uh, so on SSH or only some users, you, know, you can set that up again uh, with permissions just to this particular repository. And then HTTP access, allow, uh, allow logged in users to read and write. And so that's what I want to do. So I'm going to say create. And so you can see it's created my uh, repository there. You can see where it's located. Uh, it's on my server under Git. And there it is right there. And so I've got that ready to go that I can use uh, in development. If I ever want to edit it, just uh, all I got to do is highlight it, click on the pencil, and I can come back in and edit the information. If I want to get to it, you can see I've got a path here. If I just click on this little area, it'll show me where it's located. So again, it takes me right into the server where I have all my shares and shows me where it's located. Uh, so that does make it convenient. It makes it a lot easier to find it. Let's go back into Xcode here. And then I can always delete these repositories just right here by, by clicking the minus. All right, let's go back to settings. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how this works. Like I said, I'm not a developer myself, so uh, at least not at this point. So I don't have as much expertise in the details of it. But I wanted to give you an overview on how to set it up and what each of these things do, because I'm sure there's a number of you out there that would like to develop with this. And it really would work well in uh, small development teams and, and those sorts of things to uh, kind of combine your work in one place. Uh, if you want more information on that, you can go uh, to the developer website uh, if you're a registered developer. And they've got a lot of information about about how to set up those devices, how to provision them, and how to run bots and all of that information. So again, hopefully this just gives you enough to get you started. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.